Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie Powell and in today's video we're going to dive into some high key photography. What it is, how to shoot it and how to edit it like a pro in Lightroom Classic. Whether you're looking to get that soft bright portrait style or you're just curious about how to achieve it then this video is for you. So let's get started. First, let's talk a little bit about what high-key photography actually is. In simplest terms, high-key photography is all about creating bright, clean, almost white images with minimal shadows. That doesn't mean they're black and white. It doesn't mean it can't have color. It gives you that light and airy feel. And it's really popular, especially at the moment, because it's very polished, has a professional look, and it's perfect for things like portraits, fashion, beauty, still life, product shots, where you want the focus to be on the subject and not the background. High key lighting is used to create an uplifting, serene mood. It draws the attention to the details of your subject without the distractions which is why it can be effective in studio work. But in this video, I'm going to show you some high key that I did on location. So especially when you want to emphasize the model and not necessarily the background in your location, although you can do both like in this image. While the most common uses for high key portraits is probably going to be in fashion and beauty, you can also use it for product photography or still life and other areas. It gives you that fresh, clean vibe and it's perfect for headshots, skincare, anything that you want to give that sort of bright, approachable feel to it. It's also great for editorial work where you want the subject to shine through. You often see it used in things like catalogues, website banners, influencer content and things like that. So when you think about it, the mood is usually light, uplifting, ethereal. The goal is to make the subject feel like they're glowing, radiating positivity, if you will. You don't see a lot of shadows or dark contrasts. Instead, this there's this beautiful, almost dreamlike effect where everything feels soft and harmonious. And you can capture that in the studio with lighting and I will do that in another video but for this one what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you that you can still get a high key feel that glow the soft ethereal light by shooting outside take a little look at choosing the right image for high key editing not all photos are going to work so there are a few things to look out for first your image needs to have bright lighting now we shot this in a park and it was at golden hour I was shooting into the light so my model is actually facing away from the light so I had to make sure that I exposed for the light on her face not so much my background now the background is a little on the overexposed side but that's perfectly fine for this particular image Often I will say, look for clean backgrounds, cluttered backgrounds and too many contrasting elements won't give you that high key vibe. But I feel that this isn't too distracting. Some of the branches perhaps are a little bit, but I wanted to show you what it looks like shooting into the light as opposed to shooting in the studio. So watch out for deep shadows or really dark tones because they're not going to give you that smooth high key vibe. You'll end up spending more time editing out the shadows and it might not give you the best results. But if you want to use that image, you can. You can always brighten things up and that's what I'm going to do with this one. Okay, so let's jump into the editing side of things now. We're going to be using Lightroom Classic for this process and there are a few modules and panels that you're going to want to focus on for high key editing. So your exposure and contrast is going to be one which you're going to find. These are all going to be in your basic panels. The next one that you want to have a look at is your highlights and whites, which is in here as well. You'll want to have a look at your white balance tool and a couple of other things. So let's have a look. So for starters, on this one, I boosted the exposure up 1.23 stops. So about one and a quarter stops, right? And that has already boosted it up quite a bit. 
I did drop my highlights because if I boost my highlights up I do tend to lose all the details in the dress so I did drop them down I've also lifted the shadows up I brought the whites down and the blacks down I did boost the vibrance a little bit just because I wanted to pick up the greens in here but I could have just as easily have dropped them down as well or I can come into the color mixer and I can just drop the greens and the yellows out the problem with dropping the overall color and desaturating it is I will desaturate the skin tones and I don't necessarily want to do that a couple of other things that I also did some lens correction there is a little bit of chromatic aberrations on the dress this happens when you're shooting in high contrast areas so I'm going to pop that in it has got rid of some of it but not all of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the color mixer and I am going to bring the blues out to try and drop some of that down your highlights and white sliders can be your best friend by pushing the highlights up to really make those bright areas pop but watch out for clipping you don't want to go too far so if you tap on the little triangles up here it will show you your clipping now in high key I think it's okay to go a little bit over and above what you would normally have for an image but you do have to be careful that you're not blowing out areas like in the skin tone so what I can do here is I can go and do some masking and I'll do that in a minute the other thing that you can do is also use your white balance selector and pick on an area that you want a neutral area now you do have to be careful because this was shot at golden hour it really has pushed all the yellows up and I don't necessarily want it to look that yellow per se so I'm just going to drop that down I usually like to keep things sort of around about 56,000 I think that that's quite neutral and I really do like where that sits in most of my images but of course look that is personal choice the other thing that you need to be careful of is you don't want to boost your contrast too much that tends to make your images look a little bit crunchy and what we want to do is we want to keep it more high key we don't want to bunch it push that up so you can add a little bit of contrast but don't go too far you're gonna want to play with your adjustments check your histogram we want virtually nothing in the blacks we want to push everything over towards the lights you can use your curve tool that's another really great area to go to so if you come into your curve tool whether you're using your point curve or your parametric curve I like the point curve because it's a little bit easier to work with and I'm going to bring my blacks up a bit of course as I said before you can come in with the brush tool and do some local adjustments so what I'm going to do is go in here I'm gonna let Lightroom do its thing and detect people okay so it has detected my person what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in there now I'm not sure if it's going to do what I want because I want to just do a little bit of highlight recovery in one area so if I go to the skin it's not really doing what I want so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of that and I'm going to go to my brush and what I want to do is I just want to brush in this area here and I want to bring the highlights down okay so the next thing you might want to have a look at is a little bit of color grading now this again is personal choice I do like to put just a touch of blue into my shadows and a little bit of yellow into my highlights just be careful you don't overburden the image by doing that 
because it's already quite yellow. Some people think that if you put a hint of pink in, that can also give it a little bit of that glow as well. And that can be quite nice doing it that way too. Of course, from here, you can come in and you can do some tidy up. So there's a, a few flyaways and things like that that I can come in and get rid of. And then if you wish to, you can then come in into your details and you can do a little bit of sharpening and things like that. Then it's just a matter of exporting your image and you're done. And that's it. So now you know the basics of high key photography on location at least and how to edit your images in Lightroom to achieve that clean bright look. So I hope this video helped you understand the process and gave you some valuable tips for perhaps using in your own work. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more photography tutorials and tips. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried high key photography before and if you've got any questions about the process. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.